Hello the there, neighborina. So, first things first, let's go over a very brief introduction. So, for those of you who have not yet had the chance to enjoy the absolute freedom that comes with virtual reality, you too just may get a chance as the Everett Public Library in Everett, Washington State is having a presentation or demonstration for free for patrons who come in between April and June. This thing is going to be happening on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, 2 to 4 on Wednesdays, noon to 2 on Thursdays, and 10 a.m. to 1 on Saturdays. So, if you want to get the chance to play the games for yourself, you'll be able to try them for free for in 15-minute sections there at the Everett Public Library. And it, the participants only have to be 13 years old, However, those that are younger than 18 have to have to get their parental consent or legal guardian, whoever, blah, 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 legal mumbo jumbo. The next piece of news is about something that I'm sure all of us are excited about, and that is The Last of Us Part 2. So I, I found a source earlier today that details the reasoning behind a November 2019 launch for The Last of Us Part Two. So, as I'm sure you know, or may not know, I guess, is that the motion capture for that game has just been completed. That said, it will likely take around seven months in order to finish the game in its entirety and send the thing off to print on the discs and like ship it off in the the digital stores wherever we may find it the main reason for that that the that the article suggests are last the original last of us part one uncharted 4 and uncharted lost legacy all took six to seven months following the end of mocap in order to get shipped off to disc however the one caveat that it that this article details is that this this launch date may get pushed out due to technical difficulties or any of the scenes needing to get reshot. Because this is such a notorious release, something like that would definitely show up at an E3 presentation. However, as I'm sure many of you know, PlayStation will not be ho will not be going to E3 this year. That said, you can expect something like this to show up in their next state of play announcement, which will likely be around that time as it turns out. So, do keep an ear out for that. Their last one was put out back in March. So the next one just may be coming out in June. So, therefore, look forward to a trailer or something coming out in June in the event that, that the game itself is going to be launching in November. So, let's move on. The final article I'll be talking about tonight is 7 Ways to Make Your PS5 Better or some such. As you could probably expect, I will be giving my own opinions and what you can expect about the likelihood of these. So, PlayStation Plus, obviously, going to continue, and there have also been rumors about it expanding, so that there is not only a basic version, but also a premiere version that will allow you access to betas. That we can kind of keep in mind. Next, the article suggests wireless VR. As I'm sure you already heard, Mark Cerny has released details that suggest that existing PlayStation VR hardware will work with the PlayStation 5. However, as I've also detailed in other videos, they have also worked on, excuse me, they have also worked on and a, they've worked on a patent that would 
bring about wireless VR connectivity with a new headset model. So that one, it's likely coming. Digital backwards compatibility. Because it's already been rumored, I guess, and proven that there will be backwards compatibility, the digital version of that is almost a certainty. Because of the setup of PlayStation Now in its current setup, that almost guarantees that any virtual products you've you've bought on the store so far, be they PlayStation 4 or 3, or maybe even maybe even some old PS2 games like Destroy All Humans or something. Any kind of games like those that you've already purchased on the store, they should definitely be accessible. So that you can keep in mind. Next up, the argument about crossplay. Sony has been the biggest problem in the heels of crossplay when it comes to cross platform play. So you can't play with your cousin who only does Xbox or your little nephew who just got started playing Minecraft on the Switch or whatever. But there's some here that want crossplay between PlayStation and all the others. However, the likelihood of that because they're the current leader doesn't really seem likely. That being said, because of the dynamics that are currently shifting the upcoming generation market, that may in fact become a reality in due time. Of course, not immediately, but it may become a reality nonetheless. Next up, you don't want it to sound like a jet engine sitting in your living room or your bedroom, wherever you keep the thing. The idea is to keep a solid cooling system that isn't going to like kill your experience with the game. That may come either with a more with either with a superior fan or with liquid cooling the more likely of the two is going to be with a superior fan a more efficient fan but that of course is going to raise the price and effectively reduce the availability of the system and the market so that, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much. And the last two are, well, as far as the system itself goes, they seem almost non-existent. The first one is Seamless Online. It talks about how the PlayStation Network is consistently down. I personally don't really have that problem too much, but then again, I get on in the afternoon, like after I've gotten off work, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. So I'm not sure if any of you guys have to worry about that, but chances are, eh, you don't. But in any event, even if it does go down a lot, then that isn't really something that can be changed on the hardware level that's something that'll that they will have to work on at the at the sony server level whatever they're doing there so yeah blah 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 details details semantics and finally easier upgrades once again this thing is not a it's not going to be a computer you won't be able to modify it that much all these pieces are basically going to be integrated into the the base system slash motherboard of that's going to be running the PlayStation 5. So do not don't even try to get your hopes up about upgrading this thing. It, it's going to be 
a discreet box and upgrade it at your own peril, voiding the warranty, blah, blah, blah. And that is seven ways you can hope that the PS5 is going to get better. I think like four of those are guaranteed. Later. Ta-ta for now.